What's your favourite sport? Football? Netball? Rugby? Hockey? I wonder what you make of cricket. I enjoy it, but lots of people find it boring. In England, 150 years ago, cricket was very, very popular and the people that played it well were considered big celebrities. One of those was a man called Charles T. Studd, or C.T. as he was called. He was born in England in 1860. C.T.'s wealthy father, Edward Studd, had made lots of his money selling a plant called indigo in India, but retired in Britain where he became a Christian. Edward raised his sons to go to church, but for C.T., going to church was as fun as having a bad toothache. But his father kept praying and would often invite visiting preachers to their home for dinner because he longed to see his sons know Jesus. But C.T. and his two brothers were far more interested in having fun and playing cricket. They were all very good at it, but C.T. was considered very special. Some said he was the most talented player in the whole country. He represented his country against Australia in the first Ashes game in 1882. It wasn't until 1883, when C.T. was a student, he had a conversation with a Christian who challenged him. What is your life all about? Is it Jesus or is it this world? C.T. wrote, I got down on my knees and I did say thank you to God. And right then and there, joy and peace came into my soul. I knew then what it was to be born again. And the Bible, which had been so boring to me before, became everything. Although he called himself a Christian, his life was not all that different to what it had been before. But when C.T. was 22, his brother George fell seriously ill. He asked himself, what is all this fame worth when a man comes to face eternity? Instead of going and telling others about Jesus, I had been selfish and kept the knowledge to myself. The result was that gradually my, my love began to grow cold and the love of the world beca began to come in. I knew that cricket wouldn't last, and honour wouldn't last, and nothing in this world would last. But it, it was better for me now to start living for the world to come. And so CT became a part of a group of athletes at Cambridge who met together for Bible study and prayer. And they looked to reach out to other athletes and students on campus with the good news. Soon after that, CT went to a meeting where a missionary called Hudson Taylor was speaking. When he heard about the lost in China, he, along with six other students from Cambridge, known as the Cambridge Seven, dedicated their lives to go in there. And so they went. But sadly, his father died while he was in China. His father had been very rich and left him what would be worth three million pounds in today's money. Would he come home and spend it on himself? No, he gave it away to lots of different charities, including George Muller, who looked after orphans. We learned about him a few weeks ago. And while in China, he met an Irish missionary called Priscilla. They soon fell in love and got married. And after time, four daughters were born. Now in China, parents wanted sons and not daughters. And C.T. and Priscilla loved their girls very much. And they believed that God had given them daughters to show their new Chinese neighbours that God loved little girls as well as little boys. He was in China for 15 years. And through his preaching and his kindness, lots of people came to hear about Jesus. He then spent some time back in Britain where he rested and saw old friends and family. They wouldn't return to China. He had felt the responsibility to take the gospel to India. It had been his father's dying wish. His father had worked and lived in India for many years, but he wasn't a Christian at the time, and he wanted his son to go and tell the Indians the good news. So C.T. went, and he was a pastor there for six years. When that came to an end, he didn't want to stay in England, no. No, he was sure that Africa was where God wanted him to go next. His doctor said it was risky, as there was lots of illnesses there that he could catch, and there weren't as good uh, doctors out there. He asked different people and different charities, but they all said they wouldn't support him. It was too dangerous. But C.T. wouldn't give up. He knew God was calling him to Africa. So he sailed there in 1910 and he started his own charity call, called the Heart of Africa Missions, which is still working today. Uh, his family stayed behind in England to take care of the operations of this new charity. Uh, during his time in Africa, he went to a place called the Congo in 1913 and he told them all about Jesus and soon they were baptizing people there. 
After a while, Priscilla became seriously ill and CT rushed back to England. After she recovered, he went back to the Congo. And in 1928, Priscilla visited the Congo to see all the work being done there. A year after this, she died. And CT uh, continued his work alone until he passed away in 1931. In total, he spent uh, 15 years in China, six in India, and then he devoted the rest of his life to spreading the good news in Africa. CT was a truly global missionary. Through his work and his life, many came to know the Lord, and others wanted to become missionaries too. He gave up fame and money and comfort to share the good news about Jesus. This is what he said. If Jesus Christ be God and died for me, then no sacrifice can be too great for me to make for him.